Hello, welcome back to creating our scene loader for Unity's XR Toolkit. In the last video, we went over the entire project and we did a lot of talking. Now in this video, let's do a lot of typing. So let's go ahead and jump into Visual Studio and take a look at our scene loader script. And here we are within the scene loader where it's not a particularly difficult script. We're going to have a couple of async operations, a couple of events, a Boolean to track whether we're loading or not, as well as tapping into our screen fader so we can fade out before unloading and loading our scenes. And believe it or not, that's not a whole lot of code we need to write. We're going to need about 15 to 20 lines, so this shouldn't take a terribly long time. Now, the first thing that we're going to need to do is create some Unity events. And we're going to have one for begin load and end load. So we're going to have a public Unity event. One thing to note is I already have the Unity engine events namespace up at the top, so that's why I have access to this. And we're just going to call it unload begin and we'll initialize it to a new Unity event. And then we'll create another Unity event for once our loading is done. So we'll say on load end. Make sure we use that new keyword there. <laughs> and I put Unity engine. Oh my goodness, the video just started and everything's falling to pieces. Maybe we should restart. No, let's keep going. All right, so we have that. And we need a public reference to our screen fader. Where we're just going to call it screen fader. And I mentioned in the last video, I was hopefully going to try and do this without having an explicit reference to the screen fader, but we do need to make sure that we fade out entirely, make sure the screen is black before unloading the screen or everything's just going to disappear before we've actually faded out. There may be some tricky ways that you can do it without this, but for the sake of clarity, we're just going to have a direct reference to it. And then we'll have a private bool to let us know if we're loading or not. And obviously we're going to initialize that to false. And that's all the variables we need. In our awake and destroy, we're going to be subscribing to the scene loaded event that we can get from our scene manager. And if you notice, you'll see that we are, we already have that scene management namespace up at the top. So we just need to access our scene manager scene loaded we got to do a plus equals and then anytime we're going to be loading our scene we want to set the active scene and we have a function for that you actually can't see it but if we collapse everything you'll see that it's right down here at the bottom where it accepts both a scene and a load scene mode so let's expand that again let's go back to on destroy where we need to unsubscribe from this And then we'll make sure you do a minus equals or you're going to be in for a really bad time. And there we go. And I decided to do it this way, even though there is the potential for complications. After I built out the project and I was testing a few things, I had some weird behavior with setting the active scene manually via the scene manager. I think you can do it scene manager dot set active scene. I was using this, but for whatever reason, it wasn't working exactly how I wanted. So I just hooked it up to the event instead because I believe previously when I would load the new scene at the end of that coroutine, I was setting it there. So if you want to, there's the possibility of doing it there instead. Now that we have that out of the way, we actually don't need to see it anymore because we're not really going to be referencing it, but we're going to have an if statement in our load new scene. This is what's going to be called by other scripts within our project to load a scene where it's going to be passing in a string for the scene name that it wants to load. But before we actually need to load a new scene, we need to make sure that we're not already loading into something because obviously if you have a play button and the user keeps clicking on that play button, you don't want to accidentally queue up a bunch of things or accidentally restart the load. And you could do that here, or you could try and do it as soon as the user presses that button, that button gets disabled. There's a couple of different ways of tackling it. But the first thing that we need to do is check to see if we're not currently loading. Please note that there is that exclamation point there that makes sure that is loading needs to be false. If it makes more sense for you, if we come back up here, because some people say this is more readable. If you do is loading equals false, you could do it like that as well. Now, all we're going to need to do is start a coroutine. That's going to be the coroutine right below this one called load scene, where we're just going to be passing in that scene name variable. And there we go. So that's just the accessor for it. Now let's go down into load scene where this is going to have pretty much have all of the code that we're going to be doing or the majority of it. I think it's going to be eight lines. 
It's not particularly difficult, but we're gonna have a lot of coroutines to deal with. Now, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna say is loading equals troops. And by the end of it, we're gonna say is loading equals false. So everything that we're gonna be doing is gonna be sitting in between these two changes to our is loading boolean, where we're gonna be calling our events, doing our fade, as well as loading the current scene or unloading the current scene and then loading the new one. So the first thing that we need to do is invoke our event. So we're gonna say, hey, we're, we're starting to load anything in the scene that we wanted to do, you, you all go ahead and do that thing. Now, if you want to, you can write it just like this to invoke that event, or you could put the, uh, not the exclamation point, but the question mark here to see if it's null or not. But I don't need that right now, so I'm not gonna worry about it. Well, actually, now that I say that, let's just put it in there. Let's just be, there we go. And then we're gonna let everything in our scene know that we're loading, and then we'll start to fade out. So we'll say yield return, screen fader, start, start fade in. And if you remember in the last video, I showed you this script a little bit more in depth, where the start fade in is actually returning a coroutine. So we're actually gonna be waiting for that coroutine that we're returning to end before going to the next line. And then once our screen is fully black, we're gonna to wanna to start unloading the current scene. So I'll say yield return, start coroutine, and we're gonna be calling unload current. And that's the function right below this one. It's a very simple function, so don't worry about the specifics on that too much. And then for testing here, since my scenes are relatively empty, I add an artificial wait for seconds to show the effect a little bit more. So we'll leave a comment here that just says for testing. And we'll say yield return, new, wait for seconds and we'll just wait for three seconds if you don't want to put this in here or you want to wait for longer less obviously you can do whatever you want with it but now that we have that we basically need to now mimic these top three lines here for loading the new scene and invoking the onload end event so so naturally once we've unloaded the current one we let's load the new one so we'll say yield return start coroutine load new where we're going to need a scene name here where we already have the scene name argument that we're passing in and that's it for that and then once that scene is loaded we can fade we can remove our screen fade or make it so our screen isn't fully black so we'll say screen fader start fade out and then once we fade it out completely once we're done loading we'll invoke the onload end event And that's pretty much it. We can now come down here and we can get rid of this yield return null statement. And that's it for the actual scene loader. So just take a second, make sure you got all that right. And now let's go down to our last three functions, which all of these are pretty simple. They're only like two or three lines. Where in unload current, we're gonna create a new async operation, which is something that can more or less happen in the background as the other things are happening. Where we can call it unload operation. We'll access our scene manager and we'll call unload scene asynchronously where the description of this says destroy all game objects associated with the given scene and remove the scene from the scene manager which that's what we want to do note that we can use this function like this because it does return an async operation once we call it but in here we want to go to our scene manager and we're going to get the active scene there we go so if you remember in the last video, I stressed about the importance of the active scene. This is one of those reasons, which is, hey, let's get the active scene and unload that one. Naturally, if you've set the wrong scene to active or we're not managing that properly, we can get some really strange behavior and unload the wrong scene. Now, after that, we're just gonna have a while loop that's gonna wait for this operation to be done. So we'll say unload operation is done. And we actually can really use this yield return statement here. And there we go. That's actually it for our unload current. And then if you look up asynchronous loading online, you'll see a lot of things that use the, I can't remember the name of it right now, the progress like that, though you can use the progress. I haven't had a ton of luck with this. That'll show the actual percentage of it. But if you want to, you can experiment with that. So there's that. Now let's go down to load new, where this is pretty simple to our unload current statement. So we'll create another asynchronous operation, call it load operation. You already know what we're probably up to here where we get our scene manager. 
But instead of unloading asynchronously, we want to load the scene asynchronously, where we're going to be using our scene name to get the scene that we want. And make sure for our load scene mode, we set it to additive. Now, the difference between additive and single is when we, it's kind of in the name already, when we load additively, we're essentially adding it to the list of already active scenes that we're using. If we load it in a single mode, any scene that we currently have loaded, it's going to get rid of it. So make sure that you're loading additively. And then we want to wait for it to be done. So we'll have a while loop, say load operation is done. And there we go. And we're almost done. Just go down to our set active scene, where in our scene manager, again, we're just going to say set active scene, and we're going to be giving it the scene that we're passing in. Now let's go back in Unity so we can set up that loading indicator with our events. All right, so let's go to our scene loader. Let's go to onload begin and onload end and add a little event there for each thing. And then we'll expand our scene loader and then we'll drag our indicator into it. And if you remember, you can already see it sort of highlighted here. Our indicator is going to be this rotating cube where we're going to want to show it and hide it once we start beginning loading and ending our load. So when we start loading, we'll go to that indicator script and we'll say show. And then when we're done loading, we'll go to our indicator and we'll hide it. Pretty simple. But then we need to make sure we have an explicit reference to our screen fader, which that's going to be on our main camera. So let's go to our camera rig and then let's just drag our main camera there. And there we go. So let's make sure we save this. And then let's go up and let's hit play. All right. And when we click on the sphere here, we're going to get our screen fade out and we're going to see our loading indicator. We're going to load and unload our scenes, wait that three seconds. And once we fade out, we'll see that we're in our other scene where we can still use our existing player and interaction manager with interactables and other scenes. So that about does it for this video and this series. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you find it useful. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below and I'll see you in the next one.